for this immediately in the new year. I believe this is my first game of the new year as well. I have not played in the past day or so. So Royal Flush 168, good luck. Let's play D6 here. Hello to all our viewers on both Twitch and YouTube. Greetings Penguin Monkey on Twitch. I see a couple people queuing in uh, the YouTube chat as well. Hello, Zachary, as well as Ivan. All right, we're going E5. This offers an early queen trade, but... Hmm, okay, my opponent wants to trade queens on D1. I don't think that's so great. Maybe playable, but it's, it's a reversal of what we could have had if white had captured my queen on D8. All right, greetings, no joke chess. How are you? Happy New Year. Hello, Polar Cow. We'll play a6, just stop any knight b5 stuff. Generally a pretty useful move in these positions. Happy New Year, Malcolm. Greetings, carry on my way. All right, who's going to be the first one to take me down in the New Year? Who's going to do it? <laughs> I want to say lastly, chess plays stream. Did I lose two games? I know I lost a casual player. Shout out to casual player if they're out there. They had some really good prep in a gambit line I tried against them. So uh, you guys have been giving me some tough games. I think I lost another game as well. So not a great way results-wise for me to end Lee Chess plays. But, you know, it's good for you guys. <laughs> Let's chase the bishop. And I guess I'll castle here. You Normally, you don't get a chance to castle on this line. But I'll do it. You beat Stockfish, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, there was a user who got banned uh, immediately after I, I flagged them in a losing position. Yes, that is correct. Thank you, Unknown Gamer, for giving me a chance to rehash the rules. Anyone can challenge here. There's no priority given to uh, the time in which you challenge, whether you're a sub or not. No, we don't do that here. We uh, just take all challenges for the next two hours. But it has to be 3 plus 0 blitz, and you got to challenge me. Remember, no priority given. Those are really the only stipulations. All right, I'm going to hold off on taking this bishop. It's annoying for white if I don't take it. White is very solid here, but you know what? I've been in positions like this before out of this line from the white side. The problem is for white, they don't have any pawn action going on. That, I think, is what it comes down to. Although the pieces are arranged nicely, I mean, minor pieces could be a little bit better, but everything's centralized. The rooks are in the middle. It boils down to a lack of pawn play here. Black's pawn play is much more flexible. I've already advanced some pawns over here, grabbed some space. These pawns... Uh, have some potential as well. I'm controlling b5, but these are all sitting in the starting blocks. So I think that should yield me a pretty good position here. Now, do I dare to capture this pawn? You always got to look at them shutting the door on you with c4, but I think I can go knight b6. I don't believe... Yeah, there is knight d2 there. I was about to say I don't believe that my bishop would get trapped, but maybe... You know what? It's interesting, though, so I'm going to try it. I see an idea where I can try to get out, and I'm greedy. Oh, thank you, Zeal. Hello, K. Buckby. Greetings to you. Aw, uh, thanks. Thanks again, Zeal, for that comment. Hello, Ricardo. Happy New Year to Ronaldinho on YouTube. Thank you, Whipster. Just started using Chessable. Okay, yeah, knight d2, I think, was the more challenging move because now I can take on c4. could actually take this way as well. Um, on knight d2, I was thinking knight a4, actually, to try to prevent this king b2 move. Which would I want to take? I think I should just take this way. Yeah, no reason to allow the win of two minor pieces for the rook. Greetings to Andy is Yoda. Good to see you, OG, in the chat. Andy is Yoda has been following me for quite a long time on my uh, YouTube channel, going back probably half a decade, and also my Twitch channel. He's a, he's a Minecraft YouTuber, if you guys are into that. I don't know if he's still... Are you still actively posting? Andy, I haven't checked your channel in a little while. Um, I, don't, I know nothing about Minecraft, other than the fact that it's a massive, massive game. <laughs> All right. Yeah, white doesn't fall for this. Although, actually, I can engineer this, can't I? G4 to kick the knight away, and then we're going to jump up here and use the pin. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Go take this. I'm still holding that bishop hostage on G3. 
Hello, Ole, Ma Ole Moynihan. Greetings to you. Yeah, I hope everyone out there has had a good start to your 2022. Hope you guys have had a chance to chill this weekend. I've been chilling pretty hard. Um, spent some time with family. Didn't go out or anything for New Year's. Um, some friends that I normally would get together with were out of town or had uh, parental duties. Yeah, I'm, I'm at that age where a lot of my friends have kids. So, you know, that always complicates things around uh, holidays, right? If you want to get together with them, their time is valuable. Hello, Glukasht. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ninja Panda wants me to play the Hedgehog. Maybe I can play the Hedgehog. The thing about the Hedgehog, it requires some cooperation from the opponent. That's, that's the challenging thing with it. Ooh, did I put myself in trouble here? Amazingly? I think I actually did. I can't stop that pawn. That's kind of funny. All right, I got to just go for... Um, I got to allow him to... Okay, well, that's, that's not the right move. I might still have been winning had uh, White promoted and then I played G3. But we'll check that after the game because it could have been interesting. All right. Thank you for the game, Royal Flush. Let's check the ending briefly. I probably let your Epon get a little too far up there. I was like, eh, I'm winning this. I'm advancing here. There's no need to worry. But as I've said many times, I'm going to drill it into your head once again. If your opponent has a knight, they have a chance. And in this case, the knight was doing a great job of guarding E8. It wasn't even for like a forking reason. This is kind of an interesting position. Okay, so if E7 here, ah, you know what might be annoying? Look at this. This is sick. Check. Again, the power of the knight. Here and then this move. That's pretty disgusting, and I can't stop promotion. Not even promoting right away. Wait, unless... Do I have something? It says I'm still winning here. What is, what is the reason why? Let me think. Because this looks winning, right? How do I stop that pawn? If I give a check here, then here. Controls these squares. Why, why would I still be winning here? This, this somehow winning oh c5 wait but white can also go to d2 right check here here um zen beat just pointed out if king d4 there's c5 but to to get this in what about just king d2 hmm that controls the square. Is it something wild like check? I go here and then yeah, even that line, right? King can go to e4. Can I like push? Can, is something crazy like this? I can't. I can't believe that. I don't buy it. All right. In the interest of time, we're gonna check the engine. If this wasn't Lee Chess Plays, I would try to figure this out on my own. Knight d7. It is king a7. King a7 here. Check. Okay, king d2. What gives? G no way. No way. Oh, that's disgusting. White king queen, but this time I'm controlling that square. And the pawns win for black. Dead winning. Not even close, according to the engine. <laughs> okay, there's no way I would have found that line. Neither, no way either of us would have found that line in game. If we did, it would be pure chance. That is, that's incredible. Yeah, I had it in under control all along, right? As usual. <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, think of ways you can simplify. Actually, in hindsight, you know what might be a good move? Yeah, I like rookie two. Rookie two, I think, is a responsible move. Because if here, can't stop promotion with check. And if here, I can take and then push. And likewise, why can't stop? Because I can stop promotion because I control E1. That's nasty. All right, sorry that took a little, a little long. But I know you guys, a lot of you have expressed interest in the random analysis that I do. 
I personally find that that stuff very interesting and instructive. So um, we'll occasionally pause and do stuff like that. Good luck, Inner Greninja. Uh, shout out to Ennis on YouTube says, very interesting. Oh, hey, Royal Flush. Royal Flush is watching on YouTube as well. Let's play the Magnus variation. Well, this is not his line, but he played this against Nepo in what game was that game? I got to think. Six. It might have been game eight. I think this was game eight in the World Championship. Okay, let's go E5. Yes, we're not playing into the Stafford Gambit on this occasion. Shout out to Eric Rosen, though. I actually used the Rosen Trap the other day in my last stream of 2021 here on Lee Chess. It was dirty. There's, there's a clip floating around if you go to my Twitter. It was, um, I got to say, it was a textbook Rosen Trap I set up in a dead losing position. <laughs> It's pretty amusing. And I had never, uh, I don't think I'd even attempted the Rosen Trap before. So I have a 100% success rate using it. I'll have to do it again. But to go back to that first game, that's in a nutshell how um, you guys want to approach your chess improvement. You got to be curious about what you're doing and using the engine selectively. I want to really emphasize that. Use the, use the engine selectively if you want to get better. Don't use the engine as a default. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. We consult the engine. We acknowledge that the engine almost always has the correct answer. Most always. There's very few exceptions these days where um, a human evaluation is going to be better than what the engine is going to spit out. But we don't rely on that. We're, we're not just Googling the answers to every single question and convincing ourselves that we've uh, done research ourselves. No. Okay, we're going to trap this bishop here. We're engaging our mind first. We're being critical and drawing our own conclusions and then using the engine as a, a extremely powerful spell check. Hi, Defuser. Life is good, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing uh, chess. I'm doing what I love. I'm hel I'm happy. I'm healthy. My friends and family are happy and healthy as well. Life is good. I have uh, nothing to complain about. Hey, Torsh. Greetings. Happy New Year to you as well. In full professor of chess mode. That's right. Yeah, I, uh, I can't help it, right? I do consider myself uh, mostly a chess teacher with some chess entertainment mixed in, but I can't help it. I've been teaching chess for so long. I, I love learning. I got an Audible account this past year, and I still have like mixed feelings about my retention of information with audiobooks compared to actually reading, because I love reading. But it's been like a big, a big boost and in just increase in the number of titles I've been able to get through in the past year. So my interest in stuff extends way beyond chess. Oh, yeah, Bishop E7 was there. Mm-hmm. Now, the knight is anchored, but, yeah, I probably had that right here. Good eye for many of you in the chat. Okay, this position looks overwhelming, though. Let's continue building it. You should look into the Overdrive app. Free audio slash ebooks from your local library. Yeah, you know, depending upon your, your jurisdiction, the library is a underestimated resource, right? It almost sounds silly to say that, but I feel like maybe the younger generation in particular like doesn't necessarily realize how many resources libraries have at your disposal, especially digital resources, stuff that you wouldn't necessarily think a dusty old physical library might have access to, but a lot of them have online subscriptions of stuff you can pick up entirely for free. Thank you, Inner Greninja. Thanks for the game. Yeah, so I think in this position, Knight takes E4 is the most popular move by a good margin. Yeah. 
Uh, in view of E takes D4 running into this annoying E5 move, then your knight's a little bit adrift. I would recommend playing knight takes. And looks like it's not loaded in, in Lee Chess yet, but one topical game was that, that aforementioned uh, Carlson Nepo World Championship game. I think it was game eight. Could be wrong. But uh, there's some theory in this line. Bishop D3, D5, knight takes E5. Goes on from here. Black is fine, but that's uh, the avenue to explore. And yes, as you guys pointed out, Bishop E7 would have been strong somewhere there. Like right here. Yep. Best move. Oh. Actually, my move was better, chat. <laughs> nope. Bishop E7 is better again. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay, thanks for the game, Inner Greninja. Oh, I saw this username. Vladislav Artemyev, fantastic player, Russian grandmaster. Let's get after this. Let's try. I want to play a Jinji Indian here. Um, London. The London always spoils it, right? Well, at least when I've set up flexibly like this, there's some advantages. Like um, you can get a quick E5 in. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I've used this somewhat unorthodox development sometimes against the London with success. Uh, maybe, maybe E4 was actually good there doing something like that, but we'll keep that in reserve for now. Looks a little bit risky in the current position, so I'm not going to go for it yet. Just reviewed a Howell Artemyev game from 2016. A fun C3 Sicilian. I like Artemyev's style. He's, um, he's a bit of a chameleon, and he plays end games really well. Great endgame grinder and fighter in general. Uh, his opening repertoire, I guess I'd have to look more at what he's played recently. I know he did just play in the World Rapid and Blitz. But it seems to me like he has various like little lines that he specializes in. You know, There's some guys like that in the chess circuit, uh, and, and women players as well, of course, um, who another guy who comes to mind is Grandmaster Mark Hebden. British Grandmaster, who uh, you know is a lot lower rated than Artemyev, but they uh, Hebden, for instance, specializes in lines like the um, the Tory attack. It's actually where I picked up the Tory attack from the white side. Um, the Kali system. Uh, there's this other line. It's almost like a Jobava London, but a more conservative version of it. He plays it really well, and he's played it for decades with. D4, knight f3, knight c3, oftentimes bishop f4. And Artemyev, I've seen play, play a lot of systems like that as well. Jesse says, these days that playing style is not lasting very long in elite level. Yeah, you know, I think you're right. I think at the very top level, it's hard to be a picker and chooser of openings that are considered a little second rate. You mostly have to stick to the the mainline strong stuff if you want to get optimal results at super GM level. I do think you're right about that. Ooh, blunder. Um, table tennis ball says I'm an aggressive player and I would for sure face one D four in a tournament. Would you suggest to me, but I, okay, your question's a little all over the place. <laughs> I think I understand your meaning though. Go we'll check. We're going to get a fork here. You don't like Fianchetto lines, but you are an aggressive player. You're asking for a line against D4. Um, yeah, if you don't like Fianchetto lines, I mean, you're ruling out stuff like King's Indian, Grunfeld. Then, yeah, probably some D4, D5 systems like the Semislav or maybe the triangle variation. One line that uh, is very interesting is that triangle where you um, can grab on C4 early on. You got some options. Okay, multiple good moves here. Even this looks interesting, but I'm going to crank up the pressure on this pinned knight because if the knight moves, we're taking the queen. Let's pre-move that just in case.
All right. Thank you, Vladislav. Okay, so I believe when Black Fee and Keto is in the London, almost always White should be playing C3 to block this bishop. I think C4 is already a little bit squirrely because when I play E5, I'm starting to tear down your structure a bit. I mean, you're, you're totally fine here, but yeah, I don't know. I already kind of like how this, this is flowing for Black. Maybe you can think about throwing in, in a Bishop G5 move just to try to induce me to play F6 which could be potentially a weakening move. Uh, as played, I wonder if E4 was any good. I was thinking about it kind of after the fact here. It looks a little risky, though. E4, trying to attack this and this. Knight D4, though. And then C5, if I really want to be stubborn, but Knight B5, and I have my own issues to deal with around these squares, so probably not advisable for Black to go take that pawn. So thanks for the game, Vladislav. Yeah, and then I think you were somewhat worse here. Looks like I missed some good moves like E4 maybe somewhere. Oh, yeah, especially there. E4 opens up the attack, also hits your knight. Um, this F takes capture, kind of overrated, I think, sometimes by players because I understand your desire to maybe get the rook active, but it's more likely you're going to run into problems on the diagonal here, as happened in the game, than you are to drum up an attack here. Without your dark score bishop, very tough for you to attack me in this position. Like, knight g5 is not a threat. So, you got to be solid and take with the h pawn here, which is almost always going to be the move, by the way, between those captures. All right, next game. Ayub, 2011. Good luck to you. Hello, Matt Potter. Thank you for studying the Scandi course on Chessable. I'll try to play a Scandi today. You bet. You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> Ayub, are you there? Wake up. It's 2022. You got a Lee Chess Plays game here? Come back to your uh, keyboard. I imagine he's running to his keyboard right now. His mouse. Oh, I was going to say, I'm going to give him like three more seconds. Good luck, Ayub. He heard his name. <laughs> they heard their name and they, they made it just in time. That probably actually happens, right? If I say someone's username, they could be up in their room doing something, but that might be the, the impetus to go scrambling back just in time. A4 is interesting. I'm just going to put a stop to this expansion over here. I'll play A5. Oh, Latrone? Do I know the pawn cube opening in the Benko? No, not familiar with that. Pawn cube. All right. This move, I think, indicates white wants to go e4. So I'm going to try to at least disrupt that a little bit. Control this square, also attack this. Probably it's going to force white to go c3. But no, let's grab this pawn. Hello, eggs mom. Wait a minute. Can I go here? Looks like it to me. That is a trapped rook. I don't think I'm being too greedy here. The position's still relatively closed, but, you know, with an alignment towards my king here, the queen on the king on the e-file, I got to be somewhat careful. Okay, we're not going to rush anything here. Let's pre-move this just in the off chance white plays bishop takes d5. Thank you, Nim, by the way. This is good luck. Thank you, thank you. Okay, my opponent is tanking here. Not an easy position. They don't really have a good move. So, yep, they're giving the material. And now I'm just going to castle. We're just going to go bishop e7 and make sure we get castled here. Okay, let's go queen b6. Offer a trade. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, let's take this one as well. If take, take, queen takes b8, uh, queen takes b7, rather. I can play something like rook b8 or maybe queen a7. But I like, get, I like grabbing that center pawn, 
So we'll do it. If I castle here, white can take d7. So that's probably not the best move. Although even there, this looks pretty good. Should I play bishop c5? That looks like kind of a fun move here. Arguably entirely unnecessary, but it looks pretty fun. Nah, it's... I want to do it, though, but I think I see a good reply for white. All right, you know what? This is Lee Chess Plays. Let's try. I, as soon as I start talking about a move like that, this is not a good decision from a risk-reward standpoint, but from a spectator enjoyment standpoint, we must go for it. Do you guys know what move might be best here for white? I'll be curious what the engine thinks. Yeah, it is an unrated game, but uh, I'm willing to put my rating up. I don't get too attached to the rating. It's nice when the rating rises, but I'm not losing sleep if it doesn't. Okay. I was thinking knight e4 might have been the move. Exactly, tactics. Yeah, knight e4. I think that would have been the challenging, challenging move. Here, I don't think I have a mate, so I probably just got to like guard my rook. Let's play rook d8. Just guard this and get ready to castle. Knight e4, though. We'll check that afterwards. Mm-hmm. Getting ready to bring the bishop out. How about this? Uh-huh. All right, let's try it. Let's give it a shot. With 14 seconds left, looks fun. Just trying to deflect. Purely. All right. Um. All right, we'll go here. Now, he could take, and that's going to force a bunch of trades, but black will be winning at the end. Yeah, he's going to go for this. That is a defense. <clears throat> but it's a lot of material. All right. Ayub, thanks for the game. I do think you got to play C3, right? Right when I played bishop g6. Yeah, I think you should advance this pawn. Definitely save that pawn. Then maybe try for knight h4. I can see you're loading up for e4, but requires a little bit of preparation. Let's just see if the engine approves of bishop c5 there. Kind of hard to go wrong in this position because it is overwhelming. Okay, bishop c5, top move. Or close to it. Yeah, so the point is, if white takes the rook with check, I go king e7. And then not only is the queen under attack, but the main thing is I'm threatening, let's say they take the other rook, I'm threatening take on f2, and then queen g1 mate, supported by the bishop the whole way. So white's definitely losing if they take here. They don't have any good checks to give. I mean, knight f5, I just take. But I was wondering, yep, there you have it, knight e4. This is the reason I originally didn't want to try bishop c5, because it's just, again, it looked unnecessary. But the point there is that it defends f2, and white may gain time to play bishop e3. Okay. Hard move to spot, but makes sense under the circumstances. But yeah, it looks like that black is still de dead winning here. Um, castle, and then still threaten this, and if knight takes c5, take here. This rook's supported, so it looks pretty good. Thank you, Ayub, for the game. Happy 2022. Uh, Caleb, good luck to you. Let's play D4 in this game. Maybe I can play a Hebden system. Some sort of line that he plays. Go for it, table tennis ball. Hey, Axiom Fox, greetings. Good to see you. Happy New Year. Caleb? Caleb Thor. There you go. Work like a charm. That might be my new thing. Instead of knocking, I just got to say their username over and over again. <laughs> okay, let's play E4 here. This uh, 
What is this gambit called? Is it the Staunton Gambit? That doesn't sound exactly right. I don't remember. It is the Staunton? Okay, got it. Shout out to Howard Staunton. I can't think of any other lines named after Staunton. Okay, now D5. D5 runs into this and then Queen H5. Then you can snipe this pawn on D5 and kind of leave this one a little stranded. I think this should be somewhat better for white. The stonk gambit, yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, Python. That's me. I, I have my stream set to 720p. Not the full 1080. I think for chess streaming, it doesn't matter much. And it can, it can help a little bit. People with, uh, you know, lesser bandwidths. But yeah, that's on my end, not Lee Chess's. Okay, now this is a double attack here and here. Tough decision for Black because... Obviously, you don't want to get forked, but if he loses this pawn, then I pick up that one on e4 as well. Ooh. Well, we got to go for the rook in the corner. This is not totally over yet because a lot of times, as you guys are probably well aware, that knight will get, get trapped. Like, I'm not counting on that knight surviving whatsoever. So... Now it comes down to, can I, like, get a pawn out of this, or how can I best convert this position over time. Black does have sort of a nice structure here and a dark score bishop that I do not possess. So still got to be a little careful. Let's play this one. Because if here, they're walking right into a pin in a couple different ways. So we'll do that. Yeah, maybe knight e2 now. Maybe black's going to come over here to try to attack the knight or that. But that, that allows me to bring the knight out this way, arguably. There is king d6 then. Let me think. Because now I might have a chance to save that knight. There's also d5. I guess I can go d5, d6, and that creates a little hook for the knight. A little hook. We're going to rescue the knight from the brink. Speaking of uh, hooks and rescuing pieces from the edge, have you guys seen the 1993 movie Cliffhanger? Because I watched it last night for the first time. I was very entertained, I got to say. It's on Netflix in the U.S. And Sylvester Stallone is in it. Uh, John Lithgow. It, it's, it's a very cheesy action flick. Like, the action in it is just ridiculous. <laughs> but it was a real entertaining, just kind of mindless uh, watch. So I would recommend it if you guys are into that. Berserk said, Cliffhanger is the best Stallone move by far. That's uh, an interesting take. So ahead of all of the Rocky movies and Rambo. Some people have referred to Cliffhanger as uh, Rambo on ice. <laughs> Which is kind of fitting, I think. Although he wasn't using like too many weapons throughout. It was uh, a lot of like minimalist action from Sylvester Stallone in that movie. Also, I came to learn... I won't spoil anything for you guys if you haven't seen the movie, but Cliffhanger featured what I think is still the most expensive. Thank you, Caleb, by the way. Got to play um, something different here. E6, I think, is a reliable move. But Cliffhanger featured one of the most expensive stunts ever performed, like single stunt in a movie. And there is a scene early on in the movie where there is a plane-to-plane um, -plane repel Okay, so a character, again, I'm not going to give much away, repels between two jets mid-flight at, I don't know, 15,000 feet or whatever. Um, I don't think it was like cruising altitudes for uh, jetliners, but it was, it was high up there, suffice it to say. And the character, or the stuntman rather, repels between two planes mid-flight. And it cost a million dollars to pull off. I hope a lot of which went to the stuntman because I imagine that was like insanely dangerous and it had never been attempted before, certainly in a movie. Are you spoiling a 30-year-old movie? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Almost 30 years. 
Well, I I know some of you might watch it, so I don't I got, don't want to give away crucial plot details, but the, for that alone, I think you guys should watch it. Let's go ninety five. Now this is tricky because a lot of times they try to challenge with ninety seven, but knight takes f seven is going to hit the queen and the bishop, and that bishop will be undefended. So black has to tread carefully here how to get rid of it. Oh, that's interesting, berserk. Says the stunt man was actually paid a million dollars, so the cost of the planes and everything is included is not included in that. That's interesting to know. I didn't know if the whole stunt itself cost a million dollars, or I mean, kudos to that stunt man because he definitely risked his life. So I think he deserved every penny of that. Okay, I think this position looks a little bit better for me, but nothing, nothing too wild. Black's playing well. Um, I don't know if I should put a stop to this. I'm torn. I'm going to do it because knight c4 does look annoying. So, But I, I slightly weaken this. You got to watch out for bishop a3, stuff like that. All right, um, next, what to do. Let's go knight b1. And I feel like that knight's coming into e4. I think black's going to plonk it there. Uh, <laughs> Zen beat asked, do you ever push f5 in, the, in these positions? You know, funnily enough, I'm thinking about exactly that move. But I'm going to go for a pin instead. I'm going to try to make it difficult for black to play knight e4. Yes, the challenges are random. Hello to John Woods on YouTube. Uh, so there's no rhyme or reason. There's there's actually just an accept random challenge extension that I have. So it allows me to accept your guys' challenges randomly. That's how we do it on lead chess plays. Okay, I need some pressure here. Maybe knight g4, although he can play his knight back to d7. F5 doesn't quite hit the mark. Maybe this, although that that doesn't feel right as well. Okay, I'm going to bring this into the game. Probably get a trade. Now watch this rook to come down here. I think there may be an infiltration soon. Do I like Harry Potter? You know, I read a couple of the Harry Potter books back when I was a kid. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, no. Like, I can't really tell you much of the plot. Bits and pieces that I remember. Okay, take, queen takes, take, bishop h7, queen h5. I think I'm coming up short there. This is getting interesting. I feel like I have something, but I don't know what. I really don't know what. Let's go g4. Okay, we're going to enlist the help of the g-pawn. Time's ticking down here. We have a bullet game on our hands. Let's do it. First loss of the day says, oh, don't, don't uh, jinx our opponent here. Christopher's playing a great game. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, let's save this one. Black's definitely made a few inroads over here. And they're organizing smart counterplay. But I've got a pretty big idea coming up with G5, I think. This is, this is undoubtedly awkward for Black. They're going to try to make room for the knight to retreat. All right, we'll push. Ooh, this might be trouble now, because what do you do about this? If this knight leaves, this one's hanging. And if you take, yeah. If they were to take on e5, I was taken back. So I think that was trouble for my opponent. So now I'm up a piece. Still not over, though. All right, take that. We'll go here. And then let's get on the file. This is going to take a little bit of time to unwind. Because I don't, I don't want to lose something in the process. So how do I do this? Let's go here first. I might have to give up some small amount of material. Okay, well, now the position's changing a little bit. Ooh, trade. All right. 
Well, now I feel pretty good about this. There we go. Oh, I got my opponent totally trapped in, too. Checkmate. Okay, Christopher. Azura Christopher, good game. That was close. I think that was a balanced struggle. Probably through, uh, you know, as late as here. I mean, th this position is definitely critical because you've made a lot of inroads. You brought your rook in. You brought your bishop back. It says it's better for you, but uh, even with queen f8, actually, as you played. So queen f8, g5 is not a mistake. Is that because you have bishop takes e5? Probably that's the move that you missed here. I think you got to play bishop takes. He did lose because you jinxed him, Bubble Wrap. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way to solve this uh, knight issue here. Take with the bishop. So that when I take, now the knight can move and there's no hanging knight on d7. Uh, also, yeah. Also, if I take f6, black brings the bishop back and captures. So had black down that, they might have a compact position. But good game up to that point. I think you defended against what I was trying to throw at you on the king side quite well. Looks like it wants me to play bishop h4 here. Really thinks going for that is best. Kind of ignoring this. Knight g4. All right, so it really believes in white's attack at that point. I'm going to make a mental note of that because I do get into these positions a lot. All right, tough game. Here we go again. El Verdugo, good luck for you. All right, to the person on YouTube who wanted me to play a Scandi, here you go. Playing the queen takes variation. You know what? I don't play a lot of queen d6, so let's go ahead with queen d6. Did any of you guys play this line? Oh, you read my mind, Zen beat. <laughs> yeah, I don't hardly ever play this variation, but it is interesting. It's more complicated than queen a5 or queen... Queen d8, because uh, your queen's a bit more flexible, but also could be in uh, jeopardy in some cases. This looks pretty harmless, though, what white's doing. I don't mind this position at all for black. One advantage is uh, you do control the e5 square a little bit better in some cases, so that could be handy. Magnus does play this from time to time, yeah. Magnus told me in person about Queen e6 check on move three as well. He brought it up. He says he's tried that as, you know, like a blitz weapon from time to time. Okay, let's castle this way. And now I'm attacking this, so I think it's going to force white to take here, or may, they might go knight e2 as well. Yeah. This move looks kind of attractive now, though. And if c3, e4 looks uh, a bit painful for white. Hashtag Team Scandi. That's right. That's right, Detective. Okay, take with the queen. All right. I'm liking this position. Maybe F5, F4 coming up. We're not worried about this. This would be a discovery on White's position. So we are not at all concerned. Would I ever consider getting coached myself? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have not really worked with um, a trainer for extended periods of time in my chess career. I have had a couple coaches um, when I was lower rated. So when I first started out in chess, I had a coach around here who was a FIDE master. Uh, I worked with another FIDE master, a good friend of mine, actually, when I was around 2000. But aside from that, I'm pretty much self-taught. But yeah, I would, I would definitely be open to it. And in fact, I think I would go that route if I was training for Grandmaster. I think it makes sense. Just having someone to train against, bounce ideas off of. How long have I played chess for? I learned when I was eight, roughly. And I'm 35 now, so 25 years. More than that. 27. I can never really remember when I actually learned chess.
because I started playing my first tournament at 10. So I think it's fair to say I've been playing like competitive chess for 25 years, but I was playing a little bit before that. For sure. So we'll call it two years. I'm, I think around age eight is when I learned. Okay, let's take this one. This looks shaky for white, this whole construction. So assuming white takes with the knight, I guess c5 might just win at that point. So maybe white doesn't have a satisfactory move here. I think white sees that, which is why they're not playing it. Okay, but now I take here. I'm up an exchange plus a couple pawns. Take more pawns. I will trade with you, fine. Totally okay with that. All right, more pawns. Let's just take here just to keep it simple. Okay, thank you for the game, El Verdugo. Well, yeah, I think the setup you used against Queen D6, not the most aggressive. I admit, though, the variations are kind of tangled in this opening. One thing you can think about is a quick knight e5. I really believe in a lot of systems. In the Scandi, uh, a quick knight f3 to e5 is dangerous for black because you have various ideas with that. Bishop c4, attacking f7, sometimes knight c4, uh, sometimes bishop f4 as well, especially with the queen sitting on d6. So all sorts of options after that. A lot of times they go for g3 setups as well to try to fianchetto and also get bishop f4 in. So I'd look into a few different options there. Okay, vestige, prestige. Vestige, prestige. Good luck. Oh, no problem, Matt. Said thank you for deploying the scanty. Okay, someone wanted a hedgehog, so I'll try to get a hedgehog here. This is going to be our best shot at a hedgehog with white playing c4. Uh, White played a very early g3, though. That, that's going to be tough. Um, okay, we'll go d5. When they go g3 and they, they actually like front run your b6 attempt, yeah, you, you're probably not looking at much of a hedgehog. This, I think, is supposed to be pretty good for black, though, because I get knight c6 in with tempo. Uh, okay, that was not your best move, vestige prestige. You jumped the gun a little bit there. You did have more attackers on D5 than I had defenders, but there was a big problem. <laughs> okay, thank you for the game. Yeah, I got to move the queen to, I would say, maybe even all the way back to D1, maybe A4. But yeah, there, there's a move order nuance here. I think with this exact move order, when black plays E6, white is supposed to play knight F3. And if we look at the master's database, yeah, knight F3 is the overwhelmingly played move here. G3, while natural, it does allow this D5 move, and it's not quite like a Terash or something. With Knight F3, if Black goes D5, you can trade and then play D4, and this is a Terash defense by transposition. Totally fine for White. In fact, many would say White's just somewhat better here without much risk. But who among us has not hung their queen? So I think that's uh, relatable. <laughs> Thanks for the game. Random person, let's go. I'll, I'll play English against them. All right. Mm, let's go e4. I don't play much of this move here. This, uh, like, McKenna's style system. The McKenna's variation. It's not exactly that line, but okay. Well, big battle developing around d5. Will black go for it? They do. Okay, and now, this is interesting. I think I should probably play e5 or knight c3. Let's go knight c3. Black can go bishop b4. This actually transposes to a line of the triangle, the line we were talking about earlier, but not one that I think is that great for black. Um, yeah, taking and now bishop b4 is the critical move. This, is, this could be the martial gambit, because bishop d2, black can play queen takes d4. But black plays solid. Yeah, this is definitely playable, albeit a little passive for black, I would say, with the bishop locked in the chain. 
So, you know what? Let's try to make this spicy. I'm going to go H4. Do you guys know what my idea is with this? Other than perhaps trying to pawn storm the Black King. I'm trying to set up a specific idea. Now, I'm going to play this idea in question no matter what, but I want to see if anyone in the chat can figure it out. Uh, if I had a piece of paper here, I'd write it down and then show it to you guys so you know I'm not lying. But um, Yes, we're going for the Greek gift. This is the idea. Bishop h7. And the point of h4 is that on takes... Knight g5, if black were to take with the bishop, I can take with the pawn and open up the file. My queen's going to make an appearance on the h5 square. So it's a bit cheeky. Without, with the pawn back on h2, black would just play bishop takes g5 here and they'd be winning. So I don't think this is like the best move here by any means. It's a bit of a, a pure trick, but it's an idea you should be aware of. And black needed to, to address that threat. Now, this is going to end poorly for black, I think. Really, the only legit move here is rookie eight. Ah, oh, but that's mate in two. Yeah, I was thinking if I could take f7. But yeah, so if black takes... Thank you for the game, random person. If black takes here, we're taking with the pawn, and then the rook enters the fray, threatening this and this. And now let's say black plays f5. What move should white play here? This is going to be obvious for many of you, but for some, this is not obvious. If you know this pattern without even thinking about it, that's good. Yes, very good. We use the G-pawn. We enlist the help of the G-pawn. We don't give a check first yet, right? Because if we check, Black's running. They get on their bike and they might, they might cycle away here. But G6, you cut off the F7 square, and now this is unstoppable. Queen H8 in particular, maybe even Queen H7. So that's how you can try to engineer a Greek gift attack and the role of some of these flank pawns especially a pawn that can get all the way up to g6 or g3 in these attacks. Now, in this position here, this is an iteration of the Greek gift you got to know. Um, I mentioned if black takes, I'm taking here, and that's probably going to transpose to what we just looked at with the white queen coming in. You always got to look at the black king coming up, and it looks like it's dead lost here. But I will tell you, a lot of times, king h6 or king g6 is going to be the critical test of the Greek gift because um, it, it controls the h5 square. But yeah, here, h5, this is, this is too much. The king's getting kicked around. This is defended, and king h6. We have discoveries to win the, win the queen at minimum. So yeah, it does look like black's busted. So black needs to do something to address the threat here. Uh, f5. Knight d7 is another suggestion of the engine. Why do you think the engine likes knight d7 here? How does that help? If white does the same thing. Yeah, sure thing. Happy to explain. Absolutely. This is useful for my understanding too. Like when I actually explain it, it reinforces, it crystallizes my understanding of these patterns. Exactly, yeah. Knight d7 allows for the knight f6 defense at the end of the line. So if this happens... No problem for black. They can just do this. All this occurs. But black wants to be able to control h7, and that's why knight d7 was helpful. Likewise, if black had the option of bishop f5 at any point in this line, then this, this might not work for me. Because when we get to that sequence with the queen and knight attacking h7, you know, let's just imagine black played e5 here. Not a good move because I can take it. But um, now if this occurs, same reason, black plays bishop f5 and guards this square. So watch for that idea as well if you're trying to execute this. All right, thanks to the game random person. Pablo, let's do this. I'll play d4. Can I play a Catalan? Well, I'm glad you asked because I did play d4 with white. Let's try it. The Catalan variation. Or Catalan. Okay, this is a main line in this, in this opening. You can go queen a2 or queen a4. a6. Um... You know what? Let's play a4 here. I'm going to try to put a stop to b5. You can also play queen takes c4, but a4 I kind of feel is a bit more promising for some reason. This is all normal. Bishop c6 now is the move. And I'm not so comfortable with my theoretical knowledge here, so I'm just going to make some general moves.
we'll try to play this logically. Rook d1. I don't remember theory exactly here. This is not part of my normal repertoire for white. Okay, let's go here. These positions can lead to long grinds because white does have two versus one in the center of the board in terms of the pawns. But that, that fact itself is not that worrying for black. Knight e5 here, take. There's king. Uh, knight takes e2, unfortunately for me. Right. You know what? Let's play. Mm. I'm torn. I'm torn. Let's go bishop f4. This is always a funky idea. Allowing the capture and the doubling of the pawns, but this kind of appeals to me sometimes because you get super control over e5. You want to play a 10-minute game? Unfortunately, it has to be three-minute for me to accept. Hello, Richter's neighbor. Um, all right, let me think here. 95. Taking feels kind of lame. Let's go with 95. Richter's neighbor wants me to play an open Sicilian as white or a Nidorf as black. We want some fireworks to celebrate. Okay, I'll try. I'll try to get at least one of those in. Play me in correspondence over the next couple months. Ooh, this is dangerous because you see how black walks right into an alignment here. Yeah, black's going to lose a pawn here. I think that's all the material I can get. But I'm very happy about that. Also, this and this are under attack. I learned my lesson with correspondence games long ago. I used to play correspondence on chess.com and I would just get into these, you know, months long battles, especially if it's like more than a day per move, like three days per move. Oh, it's just torturous. And then God forbid you ever forget to make a move for a period of time. And, you know, I was like losing half of my games because I would forget about them. Um. I I'm I gotta be honest, I'm not that big of a fan of correspondence. I appreciate it for the level of accuracy that comes out of those games, but it's chess boiled down to like its absolute scientific parts, in my opinion. This is an interesting move. Like you almost completely remove any notion of uh human competition when it comes to correspondence or daily chess. Yeah, well, actually, I should, I should make a distinction there. So daily chess, very important. Like if you play correspondence on, or daily chess on leechess or chess.com, as last I checked, you are not allowed to use engines. That is against the TOS. Like you will get banned if you do that. But in actual correspondence chess, that's like sanctioned by these international governing bodies, engines are totally accepted. And it's been like mainstream for a long time, just accepted that everyone uses engines. You can use whatever resources you want. And in those games, you know, it almost always just comes down to who has the stronger, deeper engine with a minimum of human guidance. When there's mate here or here. Thank you for the game, Pablo. But I guess with daily chess, if people are, you know, playing honestly, then there is. It will, will still be decided based on who's stronger and who's looked deeper into the positions. So you're doing fine here up until this move. Bishop takes e5. It does seem like you should take on f4 and go for this structure. Like take and then take here. We can play this type of position where I've got some doubled pawns, but I'm hoping for central play. Thanks for the game. Oh, what design is on my hoodie? It is shiny. Yeah, this is a... Um, let me play my first move. Good luck, Ilya. This is a custom... Lee Chess hoodie from the 2018 World Championship. I went to the Lee, Ch Lee Chess meetup while I was out there. The Caruana versus Carlson match. Check this out. Yeah. London 2018. And I think there's something on the back too. I can't quite remember. I don't know what it says back there, but it's pretty sweet. 
shout out to Lee Chess for uh, giving me this hoodie along with uh, the other participants of that meetup. This, this is sick. This is going to be a collector's item. It's really comfortable, too. Right, Mark John? Yeah. I wish I could remember what Lee Chess mod uh, or mods, plural, were, were at that meetup. There was one guy in particular, I can't remember his name. I, I'll have to go look it up. He's a European guy. Super nice dude. And he basically organized it. It was at a pub after one of the games, like in the evening, after one of the games of the match. And it's hard to think about now, pre-COVID times. It was this pretty small pub for the amount of people that were there. And it was in like the basement. And they had a big, big blitz tournament. Um, you know, the beer was flowing, proper English pub style. It was really a good time. I don't even think I played the event. Like I came there, I was just mingling. I was just hanging out. Eric Rosen was there too. Um, let's go Rook B1. I don't really want to lose this pawn, but I still want to develop this bishop. Yeah, I think it was at King's Head, BD Gambit here. I think that's right. I think that's the name of the pub. Mm. Let's make one more preparatory move here. H3, just so I can park my bishop here without running into knight g4. John, are you a knight's person or a bishop's person? <laughs> Depends on the time control. The shorter the time control, the more I like the knights. The knights are the trickiest piece. Ooh, I, I didn't see this move. This could get interesting if black grabs here. That seems a little risky for black, but they might be able to get away with it. Oh, but I think I might see an idea against that. Let's see if black does it. All right. So now black stretched a little bit thin. They got to keep their queen defending the bishop. I have a sneaky plan. First, I attack this bishop. Do you guys know what I'm going to go for here? You seem to lack space. Well, you seem to lack faith. Mr. Prostitute. <laughs> okay. Your lack of faith is disturbing. <laughs> this is my idea. Um, oh, but then, okay, I got the bishop. Black just blocked the defense of the, of the bishop on d6. I like that Black went for that, though. They took a risk. It didn't work out, but they played the principled move there. So uh, kudos. Mm, I could blunder here. Queen takes e5 would be a big blunder. So let's go queen e3. Getting ready for bishop c3. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Dead a lot. Thank you for watching the Climbing the Rating Ladder series. That's on my YouTube channel. I do appreciate it. I want to do a series like that on Lee Chess at some point. That's been in the works for many years. I will at some point. Can I cut my camera to see the captures? Yeah, it's a bit of a problem of real estate. I could try to um, engineer my setup so that you can see everything. Like I know some streamers on Lee Chess have it on the left-hand side here. But I would have to think about how I can optimize my layout a bit more. But for now, yeah, the captures do appear like right below the time, but that's prime real estate for the webcam. Okay, let's just get active now. Putting the finishing touches on this game. Little ladder going on here, or lawnmower mate. All right. Good game, good game. Uh, what else to say about this one? I, I think the critical moment was when Black decided to take on B2. I am curious. Ooh, that's a lot of red back and forth. That's not good when you see that. <laughs> I am curious what the engine has to say about 
Ooh, B4 is a good move. Okay, I'll give my pa uh, myself a pass on B4. I see why that's strong in hindsight, but that wasn't so obvious at the time. Using the pin here, attacking the knight, and also getting ready for takes, which would be a fork on the queen and the bishop. B4, still a good move. Okay, queen takes B6. Let's check it out. It does look a little awkward for black. But I kind of backed into this, as in I didn't plan this sequence with because I missed bishop a2. But yeah, bishop d2 is a good move. And I was thinking go bishop c3 after this. But um, let's see, knight b7. I guess if I do it right away, trying to separate the queen from the bishop, queen takes a3 is possible. Black is still pretty pinned up here. Bishop f3, bishop g4, queen d, even something like queen d2. Yeah, I have a feeling this is... Quite suspect for black. So, Ilya, the way you want to play this line, back here, e4 is pretty much the only good move here for black, last I checked. You can see in the Masters database, it's overwhelmingly played. You do want to chase that knight around more. You can see anything else. The computer's not really convinced by it. Uh, you want to keep the tempo going, keep the attack going. There's some, some theory like this. e takes d3, knight takes d3. Because you always got to take when someone plays a possible ampassant against you. <laughs> yeah, and you can see there's a lot of games from here. I think black has reasonable compensation. So, yeah, you want to remember that e4 move, chase around my knight. Thanks for the game. Oh, Glukasht. Good luck. Let's play d4 in this one. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in today. Once again, we're a little over halfway through this Lee Chess Plays, the first Lee Chess Plays of 2022, at least for me. Uh, I don't think there was one yesterday, but shout out to Lee Chess for hosting this. It's a weekly thing. I'm not the only streamer involved in, in Lee Chess Plays. There are others who do it. Ooh, Bishop F5. Okay, so this is, while a natural move, a mistake. However, even someone as strong as Capablanca played this against Janowski in a game that he actually won in instructive fashion. It was a beautiful game back in, I think, 1916. And the point is, if black takes on d5 with the pawn, white goes queen b3 and attacks b7 and d5. And that is known to be bad for black. Here, though, let's see what Glukash does, because knight b4, while natural, it's going to threaten a fork, but it's going to lose material. Thanks to queen a4 check. Yeah, so Glukash goes back. That is stronger. Now, how do I want to develop from here? Do I play something tricky? e4? Ooh, I think I can do this, again, because of queen a4 operations. I'm setting my opponent. Oh, yeah, he's not biting on the material. This is looking like trouble, though. Black's down a pawn. They're getting pushed back. All right, here's another trap, Glukash. What are you going to do about this? Natural move is bishop g7, which he plays, but g4, this is the point. Knights often get trapped by knight pawns in this fashion. Uh, if you have a pawn that controls one of the major escape squares and a bishop that controls this square, then that knight is toast. And in this case, I kind of set it up. The timing, the timing of it worked beautifully because um, black's natural move is bishop g7, which also took away a retreat square from the knight. John, you're a bully. I, I feel bad about it sometimes. You know, being a bully with your moves on the chessboard is one of the few domains where it's acceptable to be a bully, right? Especially if you're bullying children. Because, <laughs> you know, chess is like a language you're communicating. But uh, don't feel bad. Like, I have adult students who... I had an adult student recently who wrote in his annotations to a game that um, his strategy in the final round of an over-the-board over tournament, he was facing like an eight-year-old kid who uh, looked really exhausted, he said, and wasn't having a good tournament. And he said, he literally wrote this in his notes. He was playing white, and he said, so my strategy was to make the game as boring and as dry as possible and not give him any unnecessary tactical opportunities. <laughs> so you can, you can bully your opponents with boredom, with uh, you know, tricky traps, and remember, especially for you adults out there, 
don't feel bad about beating these talented kids in chess because they are not going to show any mercy to you when they execute tactics on you and they go leave you uh, bruised and bloodied and lamenting the fact that you ever picked up chess in the first place. Uh, and the other thing is they will be good someday if they continue, right? Like for every uh, adult who maybe felt bad for like a Magnus Carlsen, a Fabiano Caruana, uh, Hikaru Nakamura, whoever, name any of the elite players in the world, you know, they might have wished that uh, they had gotten a victory against players like that at some point when they were, when they were younger. <laughs> Don't feel bad about it. John, are you talking from experience? Well, the thing is, like, I was that kid who was terrorizing the adults in chess, right? Like, I, I played a lot of my formative chess when I was, like, in my middle school years, elementary school, high school. And, you know, I, I really sympathize with the adult improvers because it's, it's tough when you're playing these kids who are, like, massively underrated and, you know, are solving tactical puzzles, like, straight out of, uh, you know, the womb, basically. So you got you to gotta take what you can get against them. And regardless of who you're playing, play objectively and uh, go for the throat. <laughs> Oh, did I miss a piece? Queen takes d7. Let me see. Oh, yeah, right here. Yep. I didn't go for the throat in that sense. Missed it. Thanks for the game, Glukasht. So, yeah, you got to, in this position here, be a bit more patient in getting the bishop out, if it gets out at all. So you can see the top moves. e6 is the semi-slav. D takes c4 is the slav proper. There's also stuff like a6. You can play. But this bishop f5 move, while natural, it is a mistake. Yeah, because after takes, white scores very well here. Main point being, if c takes d5, which is the desirable move, queen b3 presents some awkward issues. Uh, if black plays b6, I actually cover this in my d4 course on Chessable, which is a free course, by the way. White can go e4, and black is in trouble here. Actually, e4 has never been played in the Masters database. That's interesting. because. Um, E4 is a brutal move, and a lot of the tactics work out in white's favor after this. With the queen takes f7 threat, bishop b5 coming in. You don't want any part of this. Black is dead losing here. So thanks for the game. <laughs> Stockfish is pretty young. I imagine got beat by Stockfish years and years ago. Yes, so I've been, I've been harboring a grudge. Bishop c8 is best move. Yeah, black can play bishop c8 after queen b3. That's right. That probably is the best move, objectively. Bloodbath McRath. I like that. Okay, I'm going to put the knight here in the hopes of going for a quick e5. This is a Pierce reversed, basically. Mm, okay, let's spice this up. Let's go e4. Hello, Rhea on YouTube. Rhea asks, how long could it take for someone to reach 2,000 points if currently rated 1,500? and 23 years old, who plays for fun? And how tough is it to improve as you get better with practice? Good question. Very common question. You know, obviously, it's going to depend mostly on how much time you can devote to chess. I would say also bear in mind like 1,500 tournament rating versus 1,500 online rating is a lot different. Going from 1,500 over the board rating to 2,000 over the board rating is a, a pretty big effort. That's going to take a lot of time. But going from, say, 1,500 Lee Chess to 2,000 Lee Chess, definitely possible for a 23-year-old. Absolutely. Uh, you could probably do that in a year or two if you were very disciplined about it. So, depends on your goals. No uh, real black and white answer to that. Depends on your goals, what, what rating system you're targeting, if you're even worried about rating itself. I always think you're... Main focus should be on putting into practice good habits, like being able to play complete games without blundering, without making big unforced errors. And if you do the right stuff, the rating will take care of itself. Okay, I get a fork here. Uh, 
John got beat by a 1994 children's over-the-board electronic chess game called Excalibur and still has a grudge. I, I cannot confirm or deny that that happened. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's okay to hold grudges against electronic uh, chess opponents as well. Okay, let me think what I want to do here. I have some sneaky ideas. This is another scenario where, although I won the rook in the corner, that knight is probably dead. But let me think. Okay, I'm going to do this. White's going to go king g1, probably. It would be interesting if white didn't do that. But okay, now we're going to go here. Maybe I sneak this in. This is not an immediately winning idea if white takes. King takes h1, check. There is knight g1. But that looks so awkward for white. All the white's pieces are bound up. Okay. Yeah, so this blocks, but now can I somehow remove some of the defenders here? So let's go f5. Now knight f2, I don't mind because I can trade the knight. So knight c3 is really the only move that makes sense here. And for my next trick, I don't know that there's a trick. Maybe here? Let's try it. I'm just setting some landmines for white. But white's defending. You know, admirable. White understands what's going on here. Okay, now I think I just got to take, get one pawn for it and go about my life here. Hello, Pat. Good to see you on uh, the Lee Chess channel. Pat says, what's the best lesson you've ever taken away from one of your own blunders? Ooh, hard to single out any one thing. I would say maybe broadly, like long analysis, wrong analysis. That's been highlighted to me over and over again through my own play. Most of my major mistakes in chess have been due to overthinking things. As funny as that sounds. But there is a diminishing return on your time invested in a position and the quality of the decision. Absolutely. And good players know this, but they still might fall victim to it. It's very tough to admit to yourself, but I would actually say, I might even extend this to life. Some of my worst life decisions have been when I've, I've thought about them too much, like over-rationalize them instead of just trusting my instincts. That's not to say you should be reckless in chess or in life, but <laughs> lesson there. Okay, thank you, Bloodbath McGrath, for the game. That is a great username, by the way. I do agree with chat. This was an interesting one. I think... This idea, the engine, I don't know how it's going to feel about it for black. But I like it because it creates two points of contact and messes up white safety. And knight g4 is a double attack here and here. Looks like it already is quite difficult for white. This move did seem a little weak, giving up the bishop for the knight. I think you should keep that for defense. But I, I would admit, I mean, this, this looks awkward for you. The engine says this is best, but... Very shaky. I mean, I guess if F5 trying to drive this away, you have a counterattacking move. But I think this overall points to the fact that knight d2 is not an accurate move. You should castle here instead. Get your king to safety. Thank you for the game. Okay, Volk, good luck. Let's play knight f3 in this one. Hello, music guitar. Greetings to you. Yeah, Happy New Year. Thank you for your message. Pat said, the reverse is true also. Sometimes I move too fast and didn't think enough. Totally. I think it was Fisher who said that under no circumstances in um, a long time control chess game, should you spend more than 10 minutes on a move? And Fisher had very good time management in his games. So I think he was pretty disciplined about that sort of thing. And I, I'm really interested in how um, players who routinely have great time management, like how they think in chess, because it's such a relatable but um, underestimated part of the game, time management. And I've always struggled with the clock in chess. And really like combating perfectionism. 
Poor time management seems to work okay for Grishuk, says Decade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's an interesting case. We're taking this one because if bishop takes b2, I go here. And when this bishop moves, I'm going to take there with the help of the rook. So I win a piece here. Is that how you say your name? Decayed? Or decayed? I'm just saying it decayed because that sounds kind of cool based on your username, but could be wrong. All right. Yeah, Forktown. That's right. Let's take here. Okay. Uh, let's go 92. I'm going to make way for my queen to come in, perhaps. Get the queen up here. Launching the final attack, hopefully. Black's bailing. They're bailing to e7. Now, can I somehow take advantage of that? This is obvious. I think I should do it. And then knight e4. Go after this next. Always got to watch rook h8 a little bit because there could be Threat on h2, but I have moves I could theoretically even bail out with, even if there wasn't queen takes f6, like knight takes d6, hitting the queen. Lobo Sukari says, read somewhere Ryshevsky was bad with time management. I think I read that too, actually. Um, I mentioned this before, but a player on the American circuit I've always looked up to with time management is Alex Lenderman. He's a dude who... He's just never, I've never seen him in time pressure. It's unbelievable. He's played so many tournaments. Never once seen the guy in time pressure. I'm sure he's been in time pressure, but he's like me he's mechanical with this decision making, just like uh, very smart time management. Always puts the pressure on the opponent. Let's run the H pawn now. I would be interested in other players, especially GMs who are the same way. Like if you guys can. Think of some. Because even at the elite level, there's guys who objectively have very high ratings, but I wouldn't say are like absolute models of time management, as you saw in the World Championship. I mean, even, even Magnus, he can get uh, caught up with poor time management from time to time. Now, if my queen were not here, knight f6 would win. So I'm looking for good clearance moves. But I also think just taking here is pretty good. Let's be sneaky, though. Let's go queen h4. Bait him into playing f5. And then we fork. Ooh, yeah, and that puts even more stuff in the way. I think MVL has pretty good time management. And I think it costs him sometimes. As an MVL probably is prone to playing too quickly in certain positions. And he's a very highly prep player, especially in his openings as black, as we well know. Just in general, his prep is very good, even with white. Uh, thank you, Volk, for the game. Yeah, th this was a little trouble, a little bit of trouble for you. And arguably, yeah, I should, well, I guess I can't do it earlier. But as soon as I castle, this idea becomes valid. Um, all these captures where eventually knight takes d5 might happen because your queen is the piece defending your knight. You'd hate to take with a pawn. So if, personally, I would either take this right away or maybe drop your bishop back to e7, I think that would be a responsible decision here just to make sure this is better defended. And the in-between move attempt didn't work out so well for you here. Yeah, I think you gotta play b takes c6. Since bishop takes b2, you're losing material. Thank you for the game. Um, Harshi Gupta says, Jan has good time management, I believe. Yeah, that was an interesting stat, right? And that got him in trouble, too, because I think someone posted on Twitter. Who was it? Might have been Mike Klein, uh, chess.com reporter. Although I don't quite remember. I want to say it was him. Maybe it was Peter Doggers. Okay, let's play a Sicilian in this game. I want to say the average time spent per move in the World Championship per player was 2 minutes and 17 seconds 
Uh, this is by memory, by the way. This might not be accurate. Two minutes and 17 seconds per move for Magnus. Two minutes and five seconds per move for Jan. Oh, I didn't play a Night Orf. I'm sorry, uh, Richter's neighbor. I'm playing a Khan. But um, we'll get maybe some typical Sicilian flavor here. And definitely some of Jan's big mistakes were immediately after <laughs> playing too quickly. So yeah, he's another guy. Queen F3 is an interesting move. That is, I think, one of the best moves here. So let's attack. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to go D6. Now, one thing I've learned in this line is black. You've got to be careful on the dark squares. So even though I'm going to double up their pawns, I have to be very cautious on my dark squares here because I don't have that dark square bishop anymore. Decade says, Nepo clearly tilted after that marathon game. I don't think MVL or Fabi, Fabi would have tilted like that. Yeah, Fabi for sure. MVL, I don't know about. MVL also is pretty streaky and doesn't have good results against Magnus. Although he did just beat Magnus in the uh, World Blitz Championship, so congrats to him for winning that tournament. Uh, historically, though, he has not had good results against Magnus. But no, I, I agree. It seems like Jan, to me, like only prepared a very, a very optimistic um, match scenario from a psychological standpoint. Like he only anticipated like never being behind or being able to play like freewheeling typical Jan aggressive chess and have it work out okay. And when that clearly like didn't happen, there was no adjustment made. He just increased the recklessness. I mean, you could see in that final game of the match, I mean, that mistake he made with G3, that's inexcusable at that level. Like, that is a shocking blunder at the world championship level. But it's got to come down to psychology, right? Like, he was, I think, just psychologically done at that point, almost like way too casual about it. Like, he, he said, I'm either going to, I'm either uh, winning this game or going out on my shield, you know? Like, a draw was like not even an option for him. And just played some coffee house moves and got punished. Geary said he was trying to lose with G3. Yeah, I saw Geary's comments on that, and I'm kind of inclined to agree. It's probably one of those moves, like, maybe he just felt at the time it was not going to work out, but just already super upset with the match situation and um, had lost interest in trying to drag things out and said, ah, like, maybe, maybe I'm going to lose this nine times out of ten, but maybe one out of ten I win this and get to rattle Magnus a little bit. Which even those percentages might be optimistic. C5, C6 seemed even worse of a blunder. Yeah, agreed, and that was uh, more impactful to the match, for sure. And he still had a puncher's chance at that point in the match. I don't know. I'll be really curious. I... I I haven't followed much of like the post-match um, interviews and comments that the players have made, but I would be especially curious about um, Jan's general match strategy from like a psychological standpoint, and if he says more about it. I might be in a little bit of trouble here, by the way. I got to be careful. I was thinking King F7 here. Ooh, I might get hurt, though. Can I play G5? Oh, boy. This looks... I'm going to try it. My opponent doesn't have much time, so I'm going to try it. Buckle up, though. I could really get hurt here. I'm going to emotionally expose myself. I'm willing to be vulnerable. I could get hurt. Oh, boy. Okay, hide in the corner? All right. Let's go here. 
He has a check. He wants. I have to go back at that point. Oh, he takes here. Oh, man. Yeah, I really got to run now. Run, run, run. Survive. Duck, cover, survive. Check. When in doubt, throw in a random check. The best move, queen takes g2. <laughs> Thank you, Antonio, for the game. I'm sorry to flag you like that, but I had no other choice. I was done if I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I think I let the uh, kingside initiative get out of hand here. This is the thing. Without the dark square bishop, I mean, I was just swiping pawns. But somehow, maybe e5 is a bad move. Like It kind of just invites the knight into f5. I thought I could actually try to shore up the dark squares, but it wasn't, it wasn't so easy. Like right around here, it was dawning on me. I actually might have some trouble. The engine says it's still okay for black, but I would bet the eval is much better. Oh yeah, it's minus six here. Rook a e8, bishop d5. So, okay, e5 itself is not so bad. f6, it really hates. That's interesting because f6 looks like, never play f6, I guess, is the uh, takeaway here. To me, f6 looks pretty normal because it helps defend g7 in theory with the queen coming over, but I guess not. I guess rook g3 is pretty strong. Yeah, this is, this is bad. The advantage is climbing for white. Queen g4 is good. Bishop g7 is good. Yeah, bishop takes f6. I don't know what to do here after queen g4. So good game, Antonio. You uh, launched a good attack. You just didn't have enough time to finish me off. Thanks for the game. Yes, Ben does say that. Let's play e4 in this one. Good luck, Miller. Miller So, are you there? Miller So. Brother to Wesley, so. Miller, so. Last chance. We got to abort otherwise. I'm sorry. Oh, again, I think so. Okay, we got to try for an open Sicilian. Someone was requesting that. That's going to be my new thing, just repeating their username. Maybe they have it in a different tab. Um, what is the move here? I think it's bishop e3 and then queen f3. I think that's what the cool kids are doing these days. All right, all right. Now, let's take. Okay. Develop, guard this. Now, I'd really like to attack this knight. But how to do that? G4, G5 is a little bit slow. G4, B4, here, here. That seems interesting, though. Maybe I'll go for that. Let's try it. I'm allowing this move, but I'm not going to move that knight. I'm going to counterattack. Yeah, the cool kids. That's right. All right, H4. We continue. Miller So is not the brother of Wesley So, by the way. I don't think Wesley has a brother. But I, I just made that storyline up. <laughs> How come your rating is higher on chess.com than here? Um, so, yeah, they use slightly different rating systems. I think they're both Glico rating systems. But um, it produces different results in practice. And there are people who are more knowledgeable about this than myself. But lead chess ratings are a bit higher than chess.com ones. It's especially pronounced, though, in, I would say, like the 1,000 to 2,000 rating band. Actually, my chess.com rating is significantly higher than this right now. I'm around 2,800 on chess.com for Blitz. So it seems to me like above maybe 2,200, things actually flip. and the uh, Lee Chess ratings start to deflate compared to chess.com chess ratings. 
So that's that's a bit anecdotal, but that's what it seems like to me. All right, I'm going to be kind of careful here. Let's go E5. This is an interesting position. I want to attack this. He can always bail out with castles. I also have to watch my back rank a little bit, though. Yeah, I don't know. I wish someone would make like a comprehensive post about the difference between the chess and chess.com ratings. I would love to read it. I bet someone has posted something to that effect. Okay, can I go for the throat here? Queen h5. Check. Take. Queen back check, maybe. I don't quite know. Because I'd hate to play queen d1 here, but it might be best. Hmm. I, I'm torn. Oh, boy. I see an interesting idea. All right, let's do this one. Oh, no, my pawn. Didn't fall for it. <laughs> I was ready with bishop b5 if that were played. All right, let's take here. Could also play bishop d2, but I think this is better. Oh, he's gonna, is he going to go bishop d5? All right, let's go bishop d2. I feel like time is still of the essence in this position. And that I should probably attack f7. Yeah, I'm going to go after f7. No doubt. I think now I've stabilized things where I can do it. Could I even take there right away? I think I can. Well, now let's go here first. We got this guarded. It might be better to do it this way, because queen d7 is an insufficient defense. As we might see in the game, but I got to watch my time. I think black has to castle here and try to bail out. But it's not looking too hot. They do castle. Okay, now this feels better, but it's still a little murky, you know? Mm-hmm. Let's do this one. If it takes, I'm going to take there. I'm knocking out a bunch of pawns. Oh. All right. Well, now I got to bail out with this move. Okay. Let's go here. Push. Oh, they guard that square. Crazy. I didn't see that. Tricky. F8 was guarded the whole time. All right, now I'm probably losing, but I'm going to still try here. Oh, he took the bishop. Oh, Miller, so good, good game. You had me dead. I missed the uh, bishop defending f8 here. That was not part of my calculation. Whew. Two games now where I was losing. Yeah, two in a row. Good thing uh, there's only 20 minutes left in the stream for me. <laughs> Trying to stay undefeated in 2022. Wow, this was sharp. I mean, queen f3. Oh, did I have this here? But even there, there's this move. This was very sharp because... We're both trying to get at each other's king. And with this pawn on b2, although it kind of shelters my king, basically a back rank check is, is brutal here. I don't know. I mean, this again, this feels winning. Computer says it's trivially winning. But I, again, did not demonstrate. Oh, bishop e4. I should have seen that move. This, this crossed my mind, but not in the sense that um, the point is to deflect from c7. Bishop e4 would have been really nice. Yeah, that's the move. He called his brother. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hello, Gannon, by the way, on YouTube. Yeah, Bishop c4 is not good. 
still plus two, but I would much rather have plus 12. Oh, Gen Z, thanks for the thousand bits to the Lee Chess channel. Yeah, anything uh, that you guys donate or any subs, obviously go to Lee Chess. We are on LeeChess.org, the official Twitch channel of Lee Chess. And I know everyone involved in the site and the community greatly supports it. Though. So thanks. Thank you, Gen Z. Do I recommend players start with D3 when learning the Rui Lopez? I would not, actually. I would go for the C3, D4 approach, the main line. Get more exposure to those classic positions. Queen F3, again, the engine says this is easy, but I'm not an engine. Bishop G4, that's a, that's a beautiful move. You guys see, again, there's um, some interplay between the light square bishop and the black queen. This guards D1, so it prevents queen D1 check. Oh my, user unclear, gifting 20 subs right on cue to the Lee Chess channel. Thank you very much, user unclear. And Juho subbing, tier one. Oh, hey. Yeah, I think I speak for the Lee Chess community when I say thank you for that support. Uh, all the mods, the developers, I'm sure, greatly appreciate it. And yeah, it's community driven. So thank you guys for supporting Lee Chess. Lee Chess is great. Yeah, Bishop G4 is beautiful. Again, if takes, it's all about trying to untether that black queen from the defense of the bishop on b7. I would have needed more time. Longer time control game, I would have found those moves. 100%. But uh, the time I had here was not sufficient. And that's part of the game, as we well know. This is still good for white, but I felt really nervous here because Miller So was playing confident. Bishop a5 is evidently the only good move. That was not even on my radar whatsoever. I don't even know why that move is so good, other than that it attacks the rook. <laughs> this is complicated now. Even seeing that, I don't really get that. C4, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Here, here. Oh, sorry. Rook move first. What if rook e8? Rook e8. Check. And then e6, probably. Okay. Whereas in the game, king c6 is good. Okay. All right. Yeah, I definitely should have played e6. I, I straight up did not see that the bishop guards f8. And now black is winning. I only saved it because we we're both low on time. Thank you for the game, Miller. So very well fought. Here we go again. X escroto. Good luck. Mm-hmm. Hey, casual player. I'm glad I'm not playing you, casual player. The casual player took me down last week. Oh, I love this from X Escroto playing my favorite opening, the Scandi, and the Queen A5 variation. All right. Let's go Knight F3. And then let's go D4. Keep this pretty conventional. Oh, casual player, thank you for subbing to the Lee Chess channel. It says, go Scandi. Thank you very much. Now, this is ambitious for uh, white chasing the light square bishop, but this is the principal thing to do when they play an early bishop g4 in many scanty lines. You can try for this. And black has to be careful here. I think this position is already like borderline lost for black if they don't, especially if they don't know what they're doing. Even if they do know, I actually think this is just a bad setup for black. Because you know what? One of the um, main threats here for white there's two big ideas in this position. One is to try to play h4 and then h threaten h5 and go after this bishop. And if ever black plays h6, they would have to agree to taking with the f-pawn and really weakening their king. That structure is never good. But the other main idea is knight c4 here for white. That's why this knight f3 e5 operation is so insidious. Okay, so knight, knight c6... Now, if knight c4, this queen is nearly trapped. b4 is the only square. But then I think I play a3, and there are no squares for that queen, if I'm not mistaken. Black has something real Hail, Hail Mary, like bishop takes c2, but that's not going to work. I'm also kind of tempted to go here, but I think knight c4 is going to be the move. We control all these squares on the fifth rank as well. And on queen a6... Trying to keep the queen two squares away diagonally from the knight, they're going to run into check with the discovery. Hello, Chem Champ. Yeah, I would love to play everyone, 
But um, as I've said, the the challenge list is totally randomized in terms of when I accept. So I don't pick and choose who I accept. I just have a accept random challenge button. You can feel free to challenge at any point. There are over 50 challenges in the list. I will say there's a lot. Oh, am I lagging? Okay, A3 wasn't registering for a second. Yeah, that is a trapped queen. Maybe black could technically try to escape with it if they really get creative here, but it's not going to work out so well. Yeah, a lot of viewers today. Appreciate everyone. How many do we have? On Twitch, we have 579. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And on YouTube, we have 342. Fantastic. Happy New Year, everyone. Did the Agad Mator tournament get rescheduled? Good question. Do you guys know of any updates on that tournament? As far as I'm aware, it will be rescheduled, and they will resume it from um, the standings that they had when the server crashed for the second time, but I don't think they've announced a date yet. But that was interesting. Um, Lee Chess did come out and say that they can restore the tournament with the standings intact, so... You might remember Hikaru was leading at the time. So it'll pick back up from there. Which is pretty cool. I'm impressed by the developers. Ooh, hanging piece alert. Oh, thank you, Juho. All right, let's just bring the pieces into the game. We're going to go after the C6 Knight. I think I should institute a new tradition for the final game. You know, we've done a plenty of like uh, Bong Cloud horsey games, Bong Cloud games with the horsey set as the final game. It's a tradition, but I would maybe like to do a different one, maybe like a blindfold game or something. Thank you, Exoscroto, for the game. I do appreciate it. Yeah, so the way I would recommend playing this position, play Bishop F5, which keeps your bishop a little bit uh, out of range. Doesn't allow white to easily expand here. This is what I do in this position. Bishop f5 and then e6 when possible. Blindfold grab. Blindfold simul versus the whole chat. Is there a blindfold setting on here? I don't know that I can easily do it. I might have to download an extension or something. But uh, for now, let's take another challenge. Thank you again, Exoscroto. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, Era Wagsum. No extension needed. It's in profile settings. Ooh, okay. How would it work? If you guys can let me know. I, I'm willing to do it for the final game. I have not played blindfold in quite a while, so it could be, uh, could be a struggle for me, but I'm willing to try. Oh, I would type the moves? But is there a setting where I can just hide the... Oh, that doesn't make for good viewing experience, though. Hmm, I'll have to look into this for next time. I can maybe try this time, but we'll see. I'll look in the preferences. Yeah, I've seen uh, Eric do it. I've seen like Gari do it. He streams on Leash House all the time as well, Grandmaster Gari. Eric puts on a real blindfold and uses keyboards, right. And Gari does the same too. So that requires a little bit of prep. <laughs> Invisible pieces, and you can spec the game on a different tab, right? Then I'd have to, I'd have to grab that tab and reformat some stuff. Playing this just to rule out this. Yeah, with my streaming setup, it uh, wouldn't quite work the way you guys are describing it. I would have to spend a few minutes uh, getting it set up. Could be fine if you guys don't see the pieces. Yeah. Would you guys mind if we did that? I know it's not the best viewing experience that way, but you're right. Maybe I should just do that.
You know what? Let's just try it. We'll try it for the final game. And I'll apologize in advance that you won't be able to see the board. But if you're on Leechest, you can, of course, spectate me. You can go just follow Fins, F-I-N-S. You can find me. It might even be under um, one of the automatic, like, uh, Leechest TV streams you can watch. So if, if you happen to be on the site as well, that's the easiest way to do it. Hey, Pop Passionates, thanks for the 31 viewer raid here. Appreciate it. This is Lee Chess Plays. I've been playing players for the past almost two hours. We're nearing the end of the stream, but um, I'm probably going to play a blindfold game here in a second against a viewer. Oh, I can't even tell you the last time I played a blindfold game. I'm a little nervous. I got to admit, because I certainly don't play blindfold blitz regularly. Three minute. You guys know... A lot of you follow Danya, Daniel Narditsky. Oh, and this takes away the retreat square or the escape square from the Black King. Uh, thank you, Era, by the way. You missed that this was defended. I think you were intent on trying to remove the defender of G3, but yeah, if I keep my knight glued here, that's defended. But Danya, Danya can play blindfold bullet, and he plays at like a 2700 chess.com level. It's like insane. He does streams like that every once in a while. It's incredible. I know. I think he can play blindfold hyper bullet too, like 30 seconds. It's unbelievable. Andrew Tang as well. Yeah. Yep. Those two guys are one of the very few people I've ever seen who can do anything remotely like that. Okay. Let's play one more regular game. Lit finish. And then we'll do that final blindfold game. We'll give it a shot. I'm going to put in my food order right now, as is also a tradition. Right, let's go here. This is one of these Hebden lines I was talking about. Just an interesting little variation. All right, I'm going to go bishop e2. Castle, kind of a modest line, but reasonable. Bishop e3 usually after this. Build in the center. Ulf Anderson was a big specialist in this line, too. I think I go queen d2 now. I'm not going to chase this bishop yet. Uh, hello, The Shivers on YouTube says, what was your rating at 20 years old? Um, honestly, I think it was fairly close to where I'm at right now, FIDE-wise. Well, maybe not. So I got my FIDE title, I think, when I was 20. Speaking of 20, I think I, that's when I achieved my title. So I was probably low 24s FIDE. And now I'm like 24 or 46 or something. So not a huge difference. A little bit higher rated now, but yeah, I haven't made a <laughs> whole ton of progress rating-wise in the past 15 years. Sag. Playing A4 to stop B5. This still feels pretty comfortable to me. I mean, if I were black, I'd probably move this knight and try to go for f5. Whoa, that's interesting. I think I see what they're going to do. They're going to try to play f5 violently, but I believe there's a tactical problem. Their point is that my bishop gets trapped, and they kind of have to play that move, but I'm going to get 96 in. So I should win an exchange here. All right. Um, this is a little bit tricky, though, because if I take here, there's rook takes f1. So I think I want to take with... The queen, I'm just checking if anything else, nah, nothing else is going to make sense here. Now, knight takes, all right. Yeah, still going to be careful, like here, here. Uh, sorry, here, here. So let's go like this. Let's go here. Mm, bishop h6. Where do I put this? Queen e4, maybe. Yeah, let's go queen e4. <laughs> Gari now has nine norms, I believe. Nine IM norms. I think that's close to accurate. Yeah, if not accurate. 
<laughs> Shout out to Grandmaster Gari. He's a Fide master. He's trying to get his, his rating up to 2,400. He streams a lot on Lee Chess. Great dude. Yeah, the queen blockader. I'm just trying to shut down all these tricks that Black's trying to set up. Okay, now I could take this one, but I think I ought to take the rook. I think that's the only move that's going to make sense here. Let's go c3. Consolidation mode a little bit, just trying to shut down the opponent's play. They could have gone for knight takes d5. Yeah, but knight takes d5, queen b3 look like trouble. I'll show that briefly after this. Right. Um, all right. I'm still trying to take away counterplay from my opponent here. Knight h4 looks aggressive, but maybe queen g4 at that point. No big deal. Goes back. Okay, okay. I think I still might do this move. I like the look of this. Okay, check. We're making inroads now. F4, perhaps? Uh, it doesn't work. Let's go bishop here. Now, king f8 would be a natural move to try to escape this pin. This is, this is awkward for black, for sure. It's hard to find a move for black now. But uh, king f8, maybe queen d7, threatening queen d8 mate. Knight f5. Okay, reasonable. Don't really want to trade right now. I could trade queens, but I, I somehow want more here. Let's do this move. All right, I'm going to take now, I think. Black's low on the clock, so probably just time to swap down. Oh, this is under attack. Didn't see that. All right. And this should be winning very soon. Okay. Thank you, Lit Finish, for the game. Yeah, sharp little sequence there. But I think Knight takes E4 was rushed. I think that while possible, it is an idea. I think... It does miss the mark in view of this knight g5 96 operation. It's just interesting how decisive the engine thinks this is. It didn't feel quite that way to me here. What did I miss though? Take. I didn't want to do this because it takes, but the engine says this is absolutely winning for white. <laughs> e4. I guess it really likes this knight on e6 and the domination that I have here. I guess if you take here, probably I'm bringing the queen in. Interesting how opinionated the engine is. Yeah, dead winning and with the line that I thought was what Black was hoping for. <laughs> hey, Tommy Shelby. Yeah, protected knight on the six is greater than rook. And someone was asking about knight takes d5. That move does seem tempting, right, to attack the queen. But the problem is queen b3 actually creates way more issues for Black. Because this knight's under attack, as is the queen and the rook still. And Black can't solve all those issues simultaneously. It's on this line of fire with their king. Bad news. Stuff like here, I can just take with check. The mix of the game lit finish. Okay, we got to hurry. I'm going to do that one final game. We're going to go a little bit over here. Um, preferences. Wait, how do I get to this? Oh, it's literally here. Um, move list. I'll, I'll need the move list, I think. Uh, blindfold. All right, I've never done this before. I have played Blindfold Blitz a little bit in the past, but this is a total, okay, 1930. Am I white? All right, I guess I'm white. Yeah, I'm <laughs> looking at the letters and numbers and the fact that my clock was going. Okay, C6. So again, if you want to watch me, open it in another tab. That's what I would recommend. Playing a Karo Advance. It is easier when you can see the moves on the right-hand side. If I couldn't see that, this would be especially... This is still going to be really tough for me, honestly. C4. Develop. 
Okay. Let's just develop again. If you take c4, I'll take with a bishop. Let's pre-move that. Okay, maybe not. Knight e7. Um, okay, let's, let's pin him. We'll go bishop g5. So the knight is now pinned to the queen. Queen b6. I will go queen d2, I think. Got to guard b2. Bishop h7. Okay, I think he wants to go knight f5. So... Let's take the, yeah, let's take on e7, and then take d5, he took with the bishop. All right, let's go bishop d3. This might actually sacrifice the b-pawn, but I'm willing to do that. Because then I can castle short, and I can, I can simplify. Okay, so we got a trade there. Took with the C pawn, right? Yeah, took with the C pawn. Castled. Okay. Um, should I go for the attack here? I'm going to try to go for the mate. Uh, this is my knight g5. I'm threatening queen h7. It's supported by the h pawn. I think he's going to have to take. Plays g6. Okay. If I take e6, he has queen take, so that would be no good. So let's go. Hmm. Let's go rook b1. Rook c8. Okay. Thing is, I can't advance h5 in the current position. So I really got to be careful here. Putting up good defense. Let's go king f1. Rook takes c3, I can take either way, probably. So his pawns are on d5, e6, f7, g6, h5. That's the structure that matters. Rook c6. Okay, maybe rook h3 now? Let's get that up. Rook f8. Okay, so I'm starting to see some threats on uh, f7. Let's go rook over. Got to watch my clock, too. I'm going to be at a minute now. That's when it's really going to get tough. I think I'm threatening knight takes f7 now. So he takes. Okay, let's take with a rook. And his knight's on d7. Coming back to f8. Okay, now we're going to start to break through. I, I kind of trapping my rook here. This might not be a good decision. Yeah, he saw it. Okay, I got to take. Take here. Is he going to take back? What was that? Rook 6 to c7. So I have a pawn on g5. Or sorry, pawn on h5. No, pawn on g5. Okay, let's go king g2. I'm slightly losing track of where my pawns are. I'm trying to look at the move list to help me. You know, I hate to do that. I take g5, h takes g5. So does he... Okay, I have a pawn on h5. What was that? Rook c4? Ay, yeah, yeah. I don't know where things are. Rook h1. Can I do this? No, I have a pawn there. That's Yeah, that is the thing. So check. Okay, take.
Aïe. Ah. There's no rook there, is there? Take it. Wait, where's my... Oh. Yeah, that was, that was too tough down the stretch. I lost track of what was going on here and here. Thank you for the game, Chris24. I lose my first game of 2022. Oh, he played Rook H8? All right, let's check it out real quick. I got to probably turn off my preferences. Okay. Dang, that gets difficult in time pressure. Oh, yeah, that Rook was on H8. I started losing the picture in my head like right around here and time was getting low. I did see that my rook would get trapped, but I was just trying to get through. Oh, I could have taken here. Rook six to C7. Uh-huh. I was kind of pivoting up. Yeah, I, I had this capture for a few different moves. Yeah, I, I don't even think I saw that the G6 pawn was on board. That was, that was interesting. That attack might have succeeded had I played here or realized what I was doing at this point. Very, tr very tricky. Oh, I played knight h5 and that knight was just hanging. Yeah, yeah. I was not visualizing the pawn on that square. You know, funnily enough, here, here too, I'm pretty close to winning. Am I winning if I go rook c1? Because there's various mating ideas. Let's check. Nope, it's losing. Rook c1 is tempting, though, going for check. Evidently, black can escape, though. All right, we'll try that again next time. I know we're a little bit over on, the, on uh, time here. Thank you guys so much. That was a good challenge for me. I gave it a shot. Uh, congrats to Chris24. If I can tweak the layout, maybe we'll do this. Hopefully, that wasn't uh, too bad of, of a viewing experience. So you guys take care. Have a good uh, first week of the new year. And we're going to raid Tosh Queen, it looks like. Thanks again to No Joke Chess, one of our mods. Thanks again to everyone who challenged and tuned in today. If I didn't get a chance to play you, my apologies. I play people on my own stream, and we'll probably do this again next week. So you'll have another chance. Yeah, you guys take care. See you later. Bye.